What's up, everybody? It's Punk Rock Talk, episode 29. My guest today is Milton Chavez of the Muddy Roots Music Festival, taking place this year, September 1st for the pre-party, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th for the festival at Junebug Ranch in Cookville, Tennessee. You're listening to All Out War by the Casualties. They'll be playing Muddy Roots Festival this year. They're on our Spotify playlist, Rebellion Noise 2022. If you have not followed that playlist, you need to do that. You can find it on Spotify just by searching Rebellion Noise 2022, or it's on the Havoc Spotify page. You can go there and scroll to the bottom. You'll find it there. We update the playlist every Monday, and we always update it in correlation with whoever we're going to be interviewing here on Punk Rock Talk that week. So it's been updated with artists that are playing Muddy Roots Festival this year. Uh, And there's a lot of great artists that are going to be on the festival. Uh, It's a very diverse festival. Um, So there's a lot of great music. Have you missed an old episode of Punk Rock Talk? Don't worry about it. You can find them all on the Havoc's YouTube channel. If you have not yet, you need to subscribe to the Havoc's YouTube channel and tap that bell icon while you're at it. If you do that, you'll be notified every time we upload new content to our channel. New episodes of Punk Rock Talk are uploaded to the Havoc's YouTube channel every Thursday. So this episode will be uploaded tomorrow. This episode of Punk Rock Talk and every episode of Punk Rock Talk are brought to you by our wonderful sponsor, Dead and Buried Inc. Are you in a band? Do you need merchandise? They are your source. They can print t-shirts, patches, stickers, buttons, you name it, they can do it. You can find them here on Instagram. Their handle is at Dead and Buried Inc. That's I-N-C, not I-N-K. And you can also find them online at their website, deadandburiedinc.com. Again, that's Dead and Buried Inc. I-N-C, not I-N-K. Are you looking for Havoc merchandise? That's where you're going to find it. This episode of Punk Rock Talk is also brought to you by Rebellion Noise Records. That's right. It's my record label, uh, launched earlier this year. We've got uh, a couple of releases, Um, the 40 Fest Sampler, which we're going to be talking a little bit about that uh, towards the end of the show. Um, And then also Punk Rock Attack Volume 1 was just released. Um, And hopefully by the end of the year we'll have Punk Rock Attack Volume 2. If not, then definitely next year. You can find us on Instagram. Just search for Rebellion Noise Records. It's the only place right now where you can find us, uh, but that's going to be changing soon. So stay tuned for updates on that. Um, Before I uh, invite our guest, if you have any questions for myself or for Milton, You can submit those questions by tapping that question mark icon on your device and submit them there. Please do not put your questions in the comments section. I don't really pay attention to the comments section and they fly by. So uh, if you put it there in the, uh, the queue for questions by tapping that question mark icon on your screen, it'll get saved there so that when I go there, It's easy for me to find, easy for me to read. 
Having said that, let's get this interview started. What do you guys think? I'm going to go ahead and uh, send the invite here. All right. You know what? Hold that thought. I'm sorry. I need to mention something real quick. Um, I've been talking about this every week on Punk Rock Talk, and I'm going to keep talking about it until we know the end result. Um, Brittany of Oil Change is undergoing heart surgery sometime in the near future. Her grandmother has set up a GoFundMe page. You can find that page by going to their Instagram. The link is in their bio. Um, she posted an update to her social media the other day. Um, and she's basically basically in the same boat as the rest of us. She's just waiting on more information. Um, they're collecting as much data as they can right now about her condition with a heart monitor and uh, a couple other tests. Um, so she's waiting on results uh, of that before she knows what's going to happen next. Um, but she has been told that surgery is inevitable. Um, so if you uh, would like to donate to this GoFundMe, please go to Oil Changes Instagram, click that link on their bio, and you can find it there. And uh, we will keep you updated here on Punk Rock Talk with how she is doing. Um, and we are wishing her the best. Okay. Having said that, let me go ahead and send the invite here. Invitation has been sent. Our guest should be joining us soon. There we go. <laughs> hey. What's up, guys? How you doing? Pretty good. Awesome. Uh, can you see me? Can you hear me clearly? Yeah. All good? All yeah, good. Okay. okay, great. Um, thank you so much for uh, taking time out of what I'm sure is an incredibly busy schedule uh, to be my guest here on Punk Rock Talk today. Um, there's a lot to talk about with your festival. Um, it's a stacked lineup this year. Um, but before we get into that, I'd really like to talk a little bit about your history uh, for people that may not know, um, what uh, what inspired you to start this festival? Um, and I know it's been going since 2010, so it's it's been long running. Um, and what inspires you to keep doing it? But let's start at the beginning. What what you know was the first thing that made you say I, I want to do this thing? Uh. Well, can you hear me well, actually, first? Can you hear me well right there? Yeah, I can hear you okay. And if you would, please introduce yourself for the audience. Yeah, yeah, I'm Jason DeLaz. Uh, this is Milton Chavez. Hey. Um, it actually started back in 2009, not the festival itself, but Muddy Roots did. And it was simple as, like, I had just moved to Tennessee a few years prior. Didn't know too many people. I came from Southern California. And I was kind of like... I've never been in one music genre myself, but I was very specifically falling out of like a lot of larger ones and just kind of getting into bands that didn't really fit into any of them. And so um, I'd find them online, like on MySpace, and I used to print shirts. And I just tried to print shirts for them. And eventually I was like, hey, man, like, would it be cool if you played Nashville sometime? And they're like, well, I mean, we don't tour there. We don't really know anyone. So I just figured, well, if I want to see them, I'm going to have to find somewhere for them to play. And then I'm going to have to find people to come out so I started asking different venues, um, specifically in, in East Nashville. Uh, there's one that used to be called Maddie's Alley. It's now called East Room. And um, that guy would let me just book bands. He eventually asked me to, to be the main booking person there. And then um, after a little while that, <clears throat> well, I would like burn little CDs and go out to other bars and like hand them out to people with flyers. And like, hey, there's this band. They're like kind of punk rock, kind of folk, or kind of it's hard to explain so it's like bluegrass thrash punk whatever it's like you just make a fucking name for it, make a name up and uh, and and you create a genre <clears throat> um after a while of that i thought it'd be cool to do a festival it was a terrible idea because <laughs> 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 
everyone's coming to this festival. There's like 330 people the first year, you know, and they lost my ass. And um, so, I mean, it was, it was fun. But during that event, I also kind of realized that it was kind of filling a void for certain types of bands that were mixing stuff that didn't mix naturally like normally, you know. Um, and it kind of just became the home. And my brother actually came up with the name Muddy Roots because it was like just muddying up the roots of different genres. We just kept going from there. Very cool. And Milton, how did you get involved? Well, so me and Jason have known each other, you know, since we were kids back in California. Uh, we actually met through the graffiti scene. We both grew up painting graffiti and stuff. And uh, allegedly. Allegedly. And, um, <laughs> you know, we were looking to get out of California, you know, like a lot of people. And um, he needed help one year in 2014. And I was like, hey, I'm going to come out. Came out, hung out, ended up staying an extra week afterwards. And was like, oh, man, I want to, we're, we're going to move to Tennessee. Came out here. And at first it was mostly just like, you know, help me, me and my wife helping out with like, you know, little things. And um, I'd say what, maybe 2018, 2017, something like is where it like got a little bit more serious. And, and now it's kind of, you know, blossoming into where it's, you know, it's, it's basically like the three of us that kind of handle everything, you know, obviously Jason's still the, the captain of the ship. You know, but uh, these guys are pretty much running most of it, though. Thankfully, after 13 years, we get... <laughs> yeah, I mean, because yeah, if we're just a DIY festival, I mean, like literally, we're not like some big. We don't have big sponsors. We don't make it teams and staff, and so it's all on our shoulders. Yeah, it's kind of like when you see those movies, and and, and you know, the guy in the little town's like, "Oh, you need the the sheriff, okay?" And he puts on the sheriff's hat, and you know, <laughs> go talk to the judge, and he puts on the robe. You know, that's. <laughs> That's sort of how Muddy Roots works. Like, you know, each one of us do, you know, a dozen jobs. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of wild, uh, you know, what we've been able to do these last few years because the lineups have gone from, you know, mostly, you know, local to, like, say, middle of the road to, like, you know, we've had some, some pretty heavy headliners over the last couple of years. So and everything in between. I think it's cool that you guys, um, you know, coming from Southern California and, you know, it, it's typical there, you know, to, to see what pretty much any band that you want uh, because bands come through there all the time. And, you know, I, I think Southern California is like extremely spoiled in that regard. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, there you get the, uh, you know, the crossed arm crowds. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter who it is. They've seen that person, you know, a million times. They don't care, you know, where it is. Yeah. You know, we could, we could throw out the little surprises, you know, like this year is, you know, Cool Keats, a big, you know, kind of. We call know, it the curve, curveball. The curveball, you know, and I, I don't even know. It's a Cool Keats been to nashville or he hasn't been here in a long time so or you know like black flag was our curveball one year because before that we were super rootsy we never stick with one primary genre like we just i don't want to i know that's how you become a good business by sticking one thing and being repetitive but that's not our goal um it's about energy so it might be some crazy old bluegrass guys or headliner then next year we surprise everyone black flag and people are like what the, the hell I, people <laughs> like, I was like well you thought wrong yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then no, but I think that's cool, man, because, you know, you're basically encouraging uh, all these different groups of music lovers uh, to come and be entertained together. Uh, it's not just one specific genre, yet all of the genres that are being represented are a part of a subculture in one way or another. All organic. Uh, most of it is honestly music organic to America. But um, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm not like I'm 42, so obviously I wasn't there like in like late 70s punk rock or anything. Uh, but I've had like people like Xander Schloss, uh, you know, he's in Circle Jerks and a few other bands. He tells us he's like, man, this is just like how it was back then. It's, it was just like everyone's like equal. Like the bands are in the crowd with the fans, or like mm -hmm. 
you bullshit. And so like, I take that as a good testament to what we're trying to do. We want people that love music, love the thing, like the idea of it. Not people that are like, you go to like some big Bonner or something like people, are, I'm going to go there and do a bunch of drugs or whatever, man. Whatever, whatever they're into. Yeah. I'm not saying people don't fuck around, but, but the common denominator is people that really love music, whatever genre it is. So it's like a festival of like cult followings. Yeah, and we take pride in the fact that it's not, you know, kind of like an up, you know, stuck up kind of festival. You know, there's, you know, barricades and blacked out fences and, you know, off limits stuff. You know, nothing's out of water and bullshit. Yeah, nothing's really <laughs> off limits. You know, and and we've had a lot of cool stuff. You know, one year, one of my favorite years. You know, you know, Matt Pike was there with High on Fire and Sleep and. You know, he didn't even want to go back to the hotel. You know, he, he literally hung out with everybody, walked around. Same with Neurosis guys. You know, so it, it's cool, especially for the smaller bands that are up and coming to, like, be playing and look over to their right or left and see, you know, some legendary person. Greg from Black Flag watching some yeah, folk punk band or some shit. Yeah, watching their band and into it, you know, and they can kind of just – you know, mix in with the crowd and, and the people there too, you know, kind of leave them alone too. Don't get all, you know, crazy and starstruck and whatnot. And everyone's just, yeah, like he's saying, just equal. And so it creates a, a certain kind of like understanding as well. People know not to like fuck around. They know like we don't have fights. We might get like a few people trying to sneak in, but not like a whole rush of like fratty or no bullshit like that. It, a little bit older crowd, you know, like 30s and 40s mostly. So all of this stuff, I think, kind of sets the tone. And you can have, uh, like, it's a, it's a campground, basically, right? So people can camp out there. And, uh, you know, I'm sure there's, like, a designated area for merchandise. Yeah. It's literally a giant biker ranch that we rent. It's okay, a, that's cool. Grass. And then they have molded the center what we call vendor row as like where the where our vendors are and there's main stage but then we add stages uh they do their own like bike rallies and that actually worked out perfect because it's not like a super like um barrel environment you know and nothing we're gonna do is gonna surprise them or scare them <laughs> right <laughs> except they did say the first year they're like man your crowd looks really scary you're the nicest people <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's okay. That uh, that's happened to me before. Like records that I have on the the back wall here, <laughs> yeah. sometimes they just want to topple. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know, prior to this, you hadn't had any experience putting on a full blown festival before, correct? Uh, I mean, I didn't. I put on like a couple small shows, like when I was young in California, but not, no festival at all. <laughs> no one on purpose. <laughs> yeah. right. but, I don't know, like, you've done some shit, though. Yeah, my background, I grew up doing some, like, you know, little, you know, punk rock shows, and then, you know, I, I grew up in this venue back home. It was a really famous Southern California venue called Showcase Theater. Oh, yeah, oh, and, yeah uh, I love the Showcase, man. I was fortunate enough to play there several times. You can actually watch movies there when it was a theater. Yeah. And so that that was my home as a kid, basically. And I ended up becoming super good friends with Ezot and Joe. And, you know, I ended up doing lots of shows that I promoted myself at Showcase. And then even me and Ezot ventured off and we did our own things. You know, we did, you know, a show with the Addicts. He was managing the Addicts at the time and did a show with them and Hemet and even Fear back in the day and Dead Kennedys and whatnot. And, um, we actually had Joe come out in 2019 or 18, one of the years, um, and uh, he ran the uh, main stage for us. Very cool. Man, I haven't seen either of those guys since probably 2005 or 2006, uh, something like that. Uh, but I, I definitely still have a place in my heart for those dudes because – the showcase, you know, obviously a legendary venue, but for the Havoc, some of our early shows were, were there and like some of the largest crowds we had played for uh, up until that point 
were there. Um, and they always just treated us so well, you know, like, like family. Yeah, showcase, showcase was definitely, I mean, I, I, I actually, I feel bad for people who have never experienced showcase, you know, that, that place was a one in a million and, uh, you know, but it's cool to see, you know, it, Joe's still doing stuff, uh, you know, he's not, not doing too much, you know, he's health issues nowadays, but, um, yeah, so, I mean, that's, that my background, at least, you know. I never, I never played in bands because I can't count beats or anything musical whatsoever. <laughs> I won't say a DJ because I stuck at that too, but I did DJ twice at Showcase. Yeah, but during like the party crew scene of like Southern California, California, like Hard House and eighties New Wave flashback and shit. Both times during my set, they turned into like a full-on brawl riot where someone got like ran over. That place was crazy. Point <laughs> yeah. in the late nineties, like yeah, a lot of stuff going on over there. That's cool. Um, you mentioned the Attics, and actually, the first time I saw the Attics was at Showcase Theater. And you know, at this, at that point in my life, I had seen a lot, of, a lot of shows already. Um, and at this point, I mean, I've definitely seen hundreds of shows, maybe even over a thousand shows. Um, but that is one that is still just you know, burned into my, my brain uh, because, you know, there was so much anticipation for that show, uh, not just for myself, but the, the crowd in general, I think. Um, and the band was on stage ready to go. And the monkey came out from the green room, you know, upstairs in the back of the venue and walked through the crowd to the stage, which was just, Really fucking cool. It was just kind of an epic moment. I'll never forget that. Yeah, yeah. We 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 we've had uh, them on the lineup before. What 2019? Yeah, like, Visa. It, was, it was it was the year like a lot of festivals around the country were having Visa issues with their bands, and it was just one of their one of their guys that that got uh, his Visa denied or put on hold or something. They didn't make it out, so hopefully we can bring them back one of these days. Hell yeah, man. I mean, those guys uh, have stayed pretty active over the years, um, and I'm hoping that they're going to continue to stay active. Um, I'm fortunate enough to uh, have some connection with those guys. Um, Pete's son, Luke, is uh, a good friend of ours. And he's actually in a band with Justin and Josiah and Will. Uh, they have a new band called Cake Eater that's like uh, really influenced by like old school hardcore. And Luke fronts that band as the vocalist. Oh, okay. So if you guys haven't heard them, you should check them out. Yeah, we'll definitely check them out. Cake Eater. Um, man, it, like it's so cool hearing your history um, just because I can relate to it a lot, uh, having lived in Southern California for 18 years, you know, and uh, talking about the showcase and all that, you know, it, it's kind of, in my mind, like, the glory days of kind of the, the new school punk scene, especially on the West Coast. And I love that you guys experience that and, and have taken that, that experience and applied it to this festival in a different uh, part of the country so that you can give people a similar experience to what you had. I think that's really special, man. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah, it kind of is what we do. We like import our previous experience into Tennessee pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Not like that yet. But, boom. but that's also why our following is like worldwide, but not so much in, one, in any one area. It's like the first two Muddy Roots festivals we had had more people fly from Europe rent a car, drive 90 miles out to the fucking nowhere, then I had locals from Nashville itself, which is how I started Mighty Roots Europe Festival. I've been doing that for a decade, too. Yeah, I actually am glad that you brought that up because I wanted to touch on that. Uh, Muddy Roots Europe, um, it's fucking cool that you guys, you know, have been able to take this idea and uh, not just 
uh, have it be active here in the States, but you've got it going on in Europe too. What was the inspiration for that? How'd you pull that off? It, it was literally, I was kind of like, you know, being bitchy, you know, I was like in my 20s, I was like, God damn, like no one from t Nashville is coming. Nashville people don't go to shows unless everyone else thinks it's cool. And then Nashville people go. So I was like, oh, no one from Nashville is coming. There's more people from Europe. So I posted on Facebook, who in Europe has land that I could do a Muddy Roots Europe at? Like I had never even been to Europe before <laughs> at all. <laughs> Belgium were like, yeah, you can do it at my place. And one of the guys had like four acres and an American steakhouse up front. I was like, uh, well, he's got grass and like we can camp. And then, uh, man, just every day on Facebook, we would talk on Messenger, figure out how to do it. I had to, like, set up a company there. You can't just go. They're, like, way regulated. People think California is, like, regulated. Yeah. Like, Belgium's super regulated. <laughs> 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 super high tax and just everything. Like, you can't have volunteers there. It's illegal. It's considered yeah. the labor or something. I was like, okay, but it's interesting. So I learned how people would live their lives in another country through Messenger on Facebook, and the very first time I actually went there was the week of to set up the festival. So wow, and the whole, and the whole damn thing. I don't even know what the hell to do or what they whatever. I even put this is silly. I put I made a muddy root shirt and on the back. I wrote English speaking only because I was afraid people were going to try to speak to me in like Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like you can't wear that shirt here. It would mean something different. But they're like, oh, you're the American. Thank you for speaking English. <laughs> But it's the same energy, it's like the same spirit, it's just different people, different languages, but it's the same energy through the music is, is the word I'm going to keep using, not to sound like a hippie or nothing, but um, the same concept and understanding of what it's supposed to be about. And we did the same thing in Brazil, but we had to cancel on the week of. It was the same oh, shit. type of people, same everything, but when it came down to it, their government wouldn't give us work visas because our country is like a dick to their country. And so there's to reciprocate that. But if you're from Europe, you don't even need a work visa because the EU just sends people over. So we had to cancel that one. But I think what that speaks to is that there's pockets of people around the world that just get it. Well, I've got to tip my hat to you, man, because that's very ambitious. And uh, I mean, I think if I would have been in your position that week of going to Europe for the festival, I probably would have been shitting my pants. <laughs> Just like had no idea what to expect. Yeah, pretty was. Yeah, yeah. Go <laughs> pretty showed up into a country you've never even touched foot in. I was like, yeah. I'm gonna get lost on a train or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> but no, man, that, that's really cool. Um, I am. You know, Europe. It, Europe's a whole other animal. Um. And I'm really hoping that we have the opportunity to go there soon. Um, it's definitely a bucket list place for me. Um, but you know, it's a little bit different from my perspective because I'm thinking about it as like, I'd love to go there and perform as an artist. But for you to go there to put on an entire festival and not even be a musician, I mean, that just really speaks to your passion for music in general. Yeah, that's for sure. Not very good at telling myself no once I get an idea locked in. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And I like you grab my my wife nuts. She's like, oh, like what? What now? <laughs> I'm where, for you to do a, Oh my god. <laughs> I got the <enough>. nut. <laughs> where do you think that comes from? I I don't know. I'm just too dumb to to like step away from a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to cannot stop until it's done or until I like die trying, which is, you know, come close. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure that there's a lot of artists out there that are grateful that you're doing it because you're providing them a platform uh, to, where they can share their music with their fans and potentially gain new fans. And, you know, the industry definitely needs people like you that want to give artists that platform. So, Thank you, man. That's fucking cool. Appreciate that. And that actually speaks to the number one goal, really, with all of Mighty Roots from the beginning, was to take bands that fall between genres and introduce them or connect them to other little pockets of groups. Like, there might be deep blues, and a punk, or it breaks down to this. If I go into anyone's CD collection or now Spotify list or whatever, it's not one genre ever. That's some fake. We all listen to all sorts of stuff. 
and a lot of them come from the same place. Like blues music and hillbilly music is rock and roll. Right. Right, or like this and that, like a blend of stuff. That's the natural organic flow. Not what comes out of music row. That's the that's the packaged idea of what you're supposed to listen to. So yep. if we just connect these little groups, everyone's fan base grows. Absolutely, man. That's so cool. Um, before we continue on, I want to take a moment to tell the audience that if you have questions for myself or for Jason or Milton, uh, please tap that question mark icon on your screen to submit your questions. We're getting close to the time where we're going to start our live Q&A. Um, and this is your opportunity to ask away with whatever you want. Um, <clears throat> before we get into that, I'd love to hear, um, you know, what things have been like uh, this year preparing for the festival coming out of the last couple of years with COVID, the whole pandemic and all that shit, obviously like, you know, you can't have a festival when there's a pandemic happening. Um, what, what happened for you during that time period? I I'm sure your perspective shifted somewhat. Uh, and how has that impacted this year's festival? Um, well, I'll say that obviously COVID is not a good thing. A lot of people got hurt and died. Yeah. But when it comes to working on the festival, I actually, I needed the break. Anyways, I was already like way overdone. And like, when I get overdone, I started like spiraling, going crazy. And it's like, I had actually had like 23 events planned for 2020. And like, which is just stupid. It's ridiculous. Um, and considering it's not even my day job, it's just like the hobby job. Yeah. I like I'm a realtor by trade. That's what actually feeds my family. Um, my roots cost money. Selling houses makes money. So I was way burnt out. I needed time to be home with my little one and just cook food all day and hang out with her and like enjoy her for a little bit. So it reset me inside to be able to come back to it. And these two jump in, Milton and Delaney was hiding. Um, it kind of gave them an opportunity to kind of jump in and, and add their skill set, which was badly needed as well. So yeah, twenty nineteen was a pretty crazy year too. Like that was a it was a it was a wild lineup and a lot of a lot of logistics that year. Like a lot of flights and transportation and money. Money yeah. money, yeah. But logistically that that year it had so much going on. And that goes back to there's not very many of us, you know, even, you know, when we get to the festival, you know, we, we do have like, you know, a small team of people that, that are diehards that have helped us. And then we have volunteers, but you know, we don't have this giant team. So it's like that year was just insane. We had like we're literally attacking, tackling someone who's like being wild. I mean, like multiple members <laughs> that need to go to, you know, the airport at different times from the same band, you know, all the way to, you know, picking up the Jizza from his hotel in a Prius. <laughs> Which don't do, by the way. Don't do, yeah. <laughs> Did not like the Prius. <laughs> <laughs> I ran into some crazy like health issues this, this year to where I was like in the hospital for a week and didn't know what the hell was going to happen. And, uh, you know, they jumped in even more to kind of, like, help and take over. And now we're kind of – now we've got a system where if I fall again like that, you know, they, they can just take it and keep running. But, you know, it speaks to the whole, like, t you know, till I die, DIY till I die. So we're all, we're all that way, three of us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah COVID, COVID definitely sucks, you know. It, it almost took me out last year after the festival. Really? Yeah, it's it. Yeah. As soon as we were done with the festival, I got home and I was sick and ended up getting double pneumonia and was in the hospital and whatnot. So it it was weird. That was the you know the Delta year, so it, was, it made things you know because people didn't know if it was going to be everything was okay. It was like right that weird middle. I think it's okay. Is it okay? <laughs> things are starting to be normal, and then it got kind of bad again. So you know now I think. Uh, this year we're we're back in a in a better place and things are starting to look up. Red rock. Yeah, ready to 
<laughs> well, I'm glad you made it through that, man. Uh, I'm sure that was scary. Um, you know, it, it, definitely a horrible time in history. You know, um, I know people that um, that lost close family members, you know, to that shit. And just absolutely heartbreaking. Um, and, you know, the, the music scene suffered a lot. Uh, especially live music venues. Um, but I have tried to maintain a positive attitude throughout this whole thing, uh, you know, and believing that even though like a lot of bad shit went down, um, a lot of venues closed, hopefully that just makes room for new things to pop up. Uh, by people that are hungry for opportunity and are creative and can provide something different and new for uh, the music community. Um, and even though, you know, your festival was around before the pandemic, uh, having that break, like you said, you needed it. Um, and being able to have that time with your family, you know, and, and feeling re-energized, uh, I'm sure that is, uh, going to work in your favor for this year. I think so. Give us a chance to kind of reborn, like Phoenix style. Can't try right. to get shit stuck in a, in a rut or like a, the same thing. I, this, I, you define yourself by what you do every year. And sometimes it's just good to kind of like clear the table. Start Absolutely. The balance, man. You know, it's like everybody's struggle in life is just finding the balance. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start our live Q&A. So again, uh, to our audience, if you have questions for myself or Jason or Milton, please just tap that question mark icon on your device to submit your questions there. Okay. Um, first question comes from our good friends and Dead77 official. How can an up and coming band reach out for consideration? Um, well, Milton does all the booking now, or most of it, but we generally start maybe about a month after the festival ends. Uh, I don't know, it might be later this year. Yeah, usually, you know, we get a little bit of time to decompress afterwards, and then, you know, because it's just, once we leave there, it's like, oh, man, our brains are just mush. Uh, but, yeah, then we start mudderitsbooking at gmail.com. Yeah, that's the best one to, to hit up, um, you know, because, yeah, that is... That is one thing that we try to focus on is trying to give, you know, bands a chance, especially like the local scene, like especially here where we're from, you know, like, I don't know, these posters are horrible. <laughs> uh, we try to really support the local scene and, and where we're based out of here in Murfreesboro, um, the local scene is pretty crazy, you know, so we, we try to. They try, yeah. try to make things happen and try to make sure that, you know, some bands that don't have an outlet or, you know, chance to play in front of certain crowds or certain people, you know, we try to give them chances. I will say that there's 65 slots on average and probably like 400 bands that reach out. And it does get to me, I don't mean to be rude, it's just too hard to respond to every email. I should have like an automated thing or something. So if we don't respond, don't take offense to it. We're just over and there's only three of us. Yeah. Well, shout out to Dead77. If you guys aren't familiar with them, uh, I encourage you to check them out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are uh, Southern California homies, and they just got a new record out on uh, Dismantled Records called Demons, and it fucking rips. Yeah, those guys are good. Okay, next question comes from Husker Food. Who is the better cook, Milton, Delane, Jason, or Anthony? Who's the worst cook? Wait, did you say or Anthony? Or Anthony? Or, my brother Anthony? He's for sure the best cook. <laughs> He's for sure. He's like all day long, makes love to the food, and then pretends it sucks. No, it's the best. <laughs> After that, you guys think? I'm the worst. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm decent. Yeah, you're good. I'm the worst. Well, I fucking killed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the worst. It's gotta be slow cook, especially with like Mexican food. Yeah. What kind of food is your favorite to make? Me? 
Yeah. Um, well, I'm half Mexican, half Irish, so it's either going to be like shepherd's pie or like some crazy Chile type soup or something. I follow this lady on YouTube. It's a uh, like Mira and she's in to cocina or something. It's this little lady from Mexico who's got this like a comal, like a wood fired iron plate grill, and she cooks everything in clay pots. I just try to copy everything she does. I don't even know what she's saying. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, man. One thing that I definitely miss about Southern California is the Mexican food. Yes. I actually started a Facebook group called Tennessee Taco Support Group. <laughs> okay. Find like little mom and pop shops and whatever they make good, we post it in there so everyone can go try to support that. Go like, oh, there quick. But no one has California style burritos. That is the struggle, you know. We we get it all the time when we first moved here, you know, they'd be like, Oh, you gotta check this place out, you gotta check this place out. We go there and it's trash. And and they don't understand <laughs> Like, you know, growing up in high school, literally would ditch school and, and go to Tijuana, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> that's that's where street tacos are born. So, right. you know, it's not being, you know, I don't know, stuck up asshole, or, you know, from California. It's, well, it's like, it's literally, it's hard to have that and then come here. And, so I think, I think, I do think I need to touch on this since you touched, just receiving on my other passion. Now. So I have <laughs> learned since living here because um, I hang around different, like I'm part of the Hispanic real estate professionals groups board that services that community. And there I've met a lot of people from like different types of Mexico or like different parts of Mexico or like Ecuador or Peru, whatever. And I never considered anything but California style Mexican food as good Mexican food. But then I realized, duh, Jason, Mexico was like a massive empire that went all the way up to like Oregon and all the way down to like, you know, central California, I mean, Central America. The recipes differ from state to state and place to place. So, like, there's just different types of people here. Yeah, yeah. Different, different stews and like stuff. Okay. And you yeah. So, I uh, I'm originally from Oklahoma, and I moved back to Oklahoma uh, in 2019. And you know, the the style here is definitely very Tex-Mex. Um, and you talk to people, you know, that are born and raised here about Mexican food, and they'll say oh, have you tried, you know, so-and-so, you know, wherever, it's authentic. And it's like, I'm sure that it is, but authentic to which part of Mexico? Because just because it's authentic to a certain part doesn't mean it's the same as California. And it's usually not really honestly authentic. If it's got chips and dip, it's probably, like here in Tennessee, it's probably not what I'm expecting. Right. Okay, we've got to move on to the next question. This next one comes from our good friend, Bill Johnston of 40 Ounce Booking, Subvert 007. He says, what advice would you give a first time camper and what amenities does the campground offer? Socks. Socks. Now it's kind of a joke, you know, but socks, but yeah. But yeah, I don't know. We have free, free hot shower. So like, that's super cool. We also have a waterfall in case people just want to jump in the river and clean off. Um, it's a type of event where you can pretty much bring or do whatever you want as long as you're not fucking with anybody. So, um, like, if you want to bring your own beer, that's fine. But there's also like cheap PBR or whatever in the in the bar. Um, obviously, no guns or knives. Leave your dogs at home. No dog service dog tags because those really piss us off <laughs> <laughs> um that's pretty much it man like don't camp in the low spots in case it does rain yeah yeah actually the first first time i came to tennessee and to muddy roots you know it's the year they call it of the great flood they had rain and flash flood came through the the one lowest part washed out you know probably a hundred camps all the porta potties all the porta potties and stuff <laughs> but oh man yeah. There's a tropical storm, like freaking up from the Gulf. But so, anyways, we always tell people don't obviously don't camp in a ravine. But if you if you go to Facebook and uh, go to the Muddy Roots uh, camping page, we have a group on there. You can join the group and then up the files and actually you can click on files and there's a big thing. It's a checklist of things that you should bring or or could need. And this year we actually have a, a pretty good vendor. What was the name of the vendor? The uh, the cow. The cow. 
which is like basically like a general yeah convenience on wheels and they're basically like a big general store and they're going to have you know a lot of the things that people would need you know we've even given them suggestions of like what they should stop and and have at the festival that people are always asking for you know so there will be that you can grill out but we also have food vendors you can literally you can camp wherever you want as long as it's not in vendor row it's like uh, it's like mike Vallely told me when you're sitting down he was like man at first when i showed up to my roots it was like really kind of pissing me off because like Nothing makes sense. It was just kind of like anarchy. Like there was just like you didn't know where to go, or what to do, and he's like, "But I get it now. It's it's freedom. Like you just do whatever." Cool. He's like, a dick. It was like the best way to put it. That's true, actually. I didn't think about it. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. Next question comes from Liam Price zero zero. He says, "Muddy guys." Being based in Murfreesboro, what are your thoughts on the amphitheater they're planning to build? Also, thanks for all your hard work. What you got? The amphitheater? I thought they nixed it. Well, no, they actually just, they nixed it at first, and then now it just got re-approved. My thoughts on it, I mean, obviously it's great if they're going to bring, you know, something to the town that's going to add some nightlife and some entertainment. Um, it is kind of in a weird spot that might fuck everyone up. It's, you know, a very busy street already and it's right next to the hospital. I, I could see that causing some issues. Um, but being like doing the music stuff and an amphitheater being so close within radius to all these other major amphitheaters, you know, they have the new one up the freeway. Yeah. Uh, the first bank arena that Live Nation just opened, and then obviously downtown Nashville. That that was my only question of like, who exactly are they going to bring to this amphitheater to to fill the four thousand plus seats? You know, if they're going to have to go up against you know someone like Live Nation, you know they're going to definitely try to you know put the kibosh on it. So yeah, I, I hope it does well. Because that'd be cool to drive up the street and see someone rad, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know that they're going to the music we want anyways, because they keep talking about it being like a pop country, bourbon, whiskey bar type. type thing. So, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's going to succeed. I think it'll, I could be wrong. You can't stop both of you from spending money, though, or taking it from our city or taxpayers. They're going to try. I think I'll probably be watching it torn down in 25 years and houses put up or something. And then I hope I'm allowed to sell those houses because that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> Way to look at the bright side. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, this next question comes from our friend Kurt from Dismantled Records. He says, for Jason, has the process started at the pressing plant for the new Havoc LP? Um, no, it has not. Um, we are just now uh, entering the final mix stage of the record. Um, we hope to be done with that by the end of this month um, and then get everything ready for pressing. Um, but fingers crossed, we'll, we'll still be on track to have vinyl available for the album release show at 40 Fest uh, next year. Um, next question comes from Ophelia Necro. I am thinking of traveling there solo from California and don't really know anyone. Is this a safe place? Like, will people have my back? LOL. Oh, I think it'd be fine. Jo join our Muddy Roots Camping Festivals group and you'll see the same question posted uh, by men and women. And most people come right in, but it's cool. Come to my camp. It's like instant friends because we're all, like I said, the same concept. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. My roots is, is the kind of festival you can learn, you can show up by yourself, and you'll probably leave like with some of the best friends. I'll, I'll put it this way, and this I'm not gonna say that somebody can't steal your shit or something. Somebody could, but like there's been times where like. A band left all their merch on a table, and 
Brown and I came back and it was still there. Or the uh, there was like a porta john attendant. They left their tip jar out. Mm-hmm. Nobody touched it type thing. So not saying it couldn't, but there's plenty of times where people have proven that that's not why they're there. Yeah. The, the, the muddy people definitely try to be pretty look open and other. welcoming and, and look out for each other, uh, you know. So self-governing. Self-governing, much. yeah. Okay. Um, I did see another question fly by in the comments section, which I always tell people not to do, but it's on this topic. So I'll go ahead and ask it. It comes from Los Angeles and they ask, is there any security? There is security. It's, but it's not like the, like, you know, search your car and patch you down and rough you up and none of that kind of like aggressive stuff. It's just kind of like if somebody does get out of hand, we're going to show them how to leave. Okay. Um, next question comes from our good friends in Goners UK. They ask, what's the most memorable performance from past Muddy Festivals? Yours. Mine? Shoot, I, I don't know. I have a couple. Everything from Slim Cessna in the tent, and it's just, you know, it, it, it almost feels like a backcountry church revival. Like, I, I don't know. If you've never seen Slim Cessna, uh, you should definitely go check them out. And then all the way to seeing, like, you know, some of my favorites, like Sleep and Neurosis. And, uh, I don't know, man. That's a tough one because I've been to all of them. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, <laughs> um, it kind of seems like the ones that people talk about most is where there was some sort of like something out of the ordinary, like it's raining and some old school legend has to like move sets to under the to, like mud honey like one year had to move off the main mm-hmm. stage to the tent stage. They had to like go through like five inches of mud to get to this literally a flatbed truck under a tent. Mm-hmm. They were totally cool about it. They tore it up. Same thing happened with Wanda Jackson. You know she's like. 80 years old, little tiny lady walking up there, and she like it like electrifies you. Mm-hmm. One time, the soundtrack quit in our tiny stage, like our very first one, I think. And some of the art, some of the artists just performed acoustic anyways, like at night, and there was a crowd holding flashlights. They're like, "Fuck it, we're, I came here to perform." Didn't matter. It's like those little things seem to be the most. There was one for me because like I don't really get to watch the show. In fact, a lot of times I'm like, I watch something on YouTube. I'm like, "Oh, that happened." Like. Who had a pig? Like, whatever. Like, what the hell's going on here? Like, what's going on? There was one time in Mudder, it's Europe, though, where I, um, <clears throat> I was drinking their Belgian beer, and the team was kind of running everything, and I went into and watched Reverend Beatman, and the monsters are like a, they're from Switzerland, Sweden? Switzerland. And um, I was kind of a little bit drunk, and I'm going, I'm just floating around the pit, and all of a sudden, I'm floating, and Mikey Classic from the Goddamn Gallows had picked me up and was running me through the, the pit, and I was just kind of like, you know, just free flowing for a minute. And for someone who's like always in control of some shit, that like letting loose for just a minute was one of my most memorable sport, uh, moments. Very cool. Um, what artists are you most looking forward to seeing this year? I think you've seen. Yeah, uh, I mean, obviously, Fear. Um, yeah, there's a couple of uh, bands that haven't been this year that uh looking forward to doom scroll they're mm-hmm. they're a good one um obviously uh, oh, the, ca- the casualties I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to the casualties uh, like all the weird like religious shit so i want money and the love for aliens which yep. is they do not explain them we put them in, we call we have this other event called southern gothic we're gonna put them in that box um stoner i don't know if you're familiar with stoner but it's uh, Brant Bjork and Nick Oliveri, you know, previously of like Caius, Queens of the Stone Age. And so that would be a good one. That's their, their new band. Ooh. All right. Again, with the weird religious shit, we, um, we invited this like Aztec tribal group to come out and perform like a ceremony on Saturday and Sunday morning. That's rad for me. Just kind of like set the day off with like that tone. Cool. Um, you mentioned Fear, and they've been in the studio working on a new record. Uh, I'm super anxious to hear it because they haven't put out a new record in quite a while. Um, 
And I've actually seen them once uh, in Orange County at um, – shit, I'm forgetting the name of that that venue. Um, yeah. Great show, but I'd love to see them again. Yeah, Ga uh, Galaxy. Um, but, yeah, I'd love to see them again, man. It's cool that they're going to be playing your fest. That, Lee Ving is like – one person I'd kill to interview, man, because I <laughs> just such an awesome, peculiar personality. Yeah, he's uh, and they're doing the 40th anniversary of the record, so like, I'm guessing it's just gonna be only that set. Yeah, they're playing it in its uh, entirety, so yeah, it's gonna be pretty good. Yeah. When I hear the new ones, might have to wait. Might have to wait till the next time. Yeah, yeah. Are you coming out to Buddy? No, man. I I wish I could, but. I'll you hook you up. You hook me up, <laughs> man. I I wish, but you know, I I have a one year old, and you know, my wife and I were finally going on our honeymoon uh, that had been postponed and postponed because of COVID. Um, that's going to be happening at the end of September. Um, and it's the first time that we're going to be away from our little one since she was born for any like extended period of time. So we're, we're kind of preparing ourselves for that right now. Um, I really appreciate the invitation. I wish I could take you up on it, but not practical for me this year, but next year. Yeah. I'd love to, to attend. Always. That's always the guiding force between all of us. So we'll be here next year. Sick. Um, so we are, uh, pretty much getting to that time where I'm going to have to wrap it up, unfortunately. Um, but before, uh, we do that, I, uh, wanted to ask you guys if you have any shout outs that you'd like to give. Yeah. I mean, uh, we do have a couple, uh, people that do support money, you know, um, you know, Paps has always had our, our back, you know, they, and what they do for us uh, is they just make sure all the artists are taken care of, you know, and stay hydrated out there in the field. And speaking of hydrated, uh, you know, death, you know, they, they last couple of years of a lot to make sure that we have plenty of water, it gets hot out there. And, you know, so they've been giving us tons of water. Um, Hicks Farm Breweries, which is a local Cookville brewery. Um, you know, they're coming out to, to help hook up, you know, the artists as well and make sure, you know, we try to make all, make sure all the bands are like, you know, taken care of, you know, we want to make sure that they have a good time and, and then obviously find a home in Tennessee. I like to thank my day job. <laughs> 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 I need a shout out to Art the Bow. Yeah. <laughs> and that's pretty much man. Really, what it comes down to is just like there's a lot of people behind the scenes that never get mentioned and probably don't even want to be mentioned. But since we are DIY, like this is a direct thank you to them. They know what they've done and everything they do to support. Yeah. Whether it's something small to picking up something in the field or like someone who's like coming and save the day one day. Yep. And Delaney, yeah. of course, she's the real boss. <laughs> Awesome. Well, um, I want to thank you guys for uh, taking the time to be my guests today on Punk Rock Talk. I've really enjoyed chatting with you. Um, I uh, am wishing you all the luck uh, in the world for a successful festival this year and in the future. Um, before I come to a close with this, I do need to make one announcement um, of my own um, 40 Fest announcement, actually. Uh, confirmed this year uh, is Endless Struggle, Angry Youth, and Rotten Stitches. Those are the new announcements that have been confirmed and uh, expect to see flyers for that uh, being posted to social media from... Um, the 40 ounce booking page and from rebellion noise records. Um, having said that, would you guys like to announce who next week's guest is going to be here on punk rock talk? 
Yeah, next week, uh, the Shivers from Wyoming. We're going to be um, definitely check those guys out. And speaking of 40 Fest, if you've never been to 40 Fest, that, that is an awesome festival that, that Bill does down there, down there in Atlanta. I took my daughter last year, and it was insane. So I'm expecting nothing I think but the we, same this I think next we year. Taco guy, didn't we? Didn't we still the taco guy? Yeah, they, they actually the taco guy is coming out to money this year. So <laughs> thankful about that too. He's a fellow uh, Southern California guy. Right on. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, 40 Fest next year. Um, not just because we're playing. Uh, and it's our record release show, so I'm I'm super excited about that. But uh, there's just so many cool bands that are playing, and I've had the pleasure of interviewing several of them here on Punk Rock Talk. But uh, the fest will be my first time to actually interact with them in person, so that's going to be great, man. And uh, Bill was saying the other day that uh, tickets are going to be going on sale soon too, so. Uh, I think it's going to be great, man. If you guys are able to attend that, I, I'd love to hang out with you there. Yeah, well, I, I know I'll be there for sure. So, okay. yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks again so much uh, for being my guest here on Punk Rock Talk. Uh, to play us out, this is All Out War by the Casualties. Until next time, we'll see you later. Thanks for watching Punk Rock Talk. Hey, thank you. You're welcome. Please <laughs> <laughs>